Welcome to How to Rock the Stage Show, a show committed to equipping you to hone your media skills better to stand out from the crowd as a go-to expert in your field. Each week, Rich Montreger interviews top leaders, influencers, authors, speakers, podcasters, and media professionals about how to leverage media best to help you shine brighter on camera and stage as a go-to expert. Now, here's your host, The Trigger, Rich Von Trigger. Thank you, Dan, and welcome back once again to Rock to Stage Show. It's Sunday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. We're here with you every Sunday night, just like Dan said, to help you elevate your brand through the power of media. But as I've mentioned several times recently, the year 2024, Rock the Stage is dedicated to confidence on camera and mic. We love to do this stuff. Many of us want to do it. We want to have our own streaming podcast. We want to be on YouTube. We want to be interviewed shows. But the one thing we struggle with is both confidence and clarity of message. We get all tongue-tied. We get all tangled up. Sometimes it just is frustrating. We're going to get into that here today. We have a great guest to dive deeper and deeper into that with us. But first, before we get rocking and rolling here today, we do want to thank our sponsors, Adavita Studios is sponsoring Rock the Stage Show, and they work with you to produce your audio book, your podcast series, and distribute it to the market even faster. Adavita is connecting you to the your voice to the world. And for more information, go to adavita.com. Also, suspiciously convenient productions based out of Canada. Canada, they will take your TV show, your book, They'll turn it into a TV series. They'll turn it into a movie. They'll help you actually produce a real studio production. Learn more and reach out suspiciously convenient productions. But today it is going to be about confidence and clarity. The two C's that help you in media more than anything else. You do want to shine bright. You do want to elevate your brand, but you want to do it with a little pop and sizzle. You know, are you standing in the shadows and not getting the recognition that you would want? Diane DeRista, professional speaker, executive speech coach, and author of Knockout Presentations, is going to show us how to overcome the barriers to presentations, to brilliance, and to speaking more and more with confidence. Welcome to Rock the Stage, Diane DeRista. Thank you, Rich. Great to be here. Great to have you with us here today. And I love talking about confidence, but I love how you put this whole idea of knockout presentations that's what we want. We all want home runs, don't we? We all do. And I have to thank the original publisher for that title. But uh, it, it does resonate very well because you want to knock it out of the park. You want to have a home run, not to use all the baseball analogies, but that's what people want. And, you know, you have how many seconds before you make a first impression and you got to be able to do it and do it well. I think more than ever before, your success depends on how well you present yourself, your, mar your marketing, your value. And I don't care if it's a job interview, a talk, maybe you're speaking someplace, people are making judgments and the way that you present yourself can make or break your success. Really well, important skill. Right. And I was talking to somebody just this week, they, they were talking about the fact that we still don't have our confidence yet. We would on Zoom, on whatever platform you use, all the way through pandemic, we were learning and learning. Here we are now, three years into most people just learning what you and I have known for years. Mm -hmm. But it's still not clicking. Why do you think the confidence has not risen yet, even though we've been doing this for three years? Well, I think it's fear. It, part of it is fear. Some of it's lack of knowledge, uh, avoidance. And one of the things that I work on with people is to stop playing it safe in front of the room. And I think that is one of the big issues that people have. And so they avoid and they do what they already know. And you can't do that anymore because the cost of playing it safe in front of the room is too costly. It's too high. So I think that's one of the things that gets in the way. Well, okay, you, you you just launched off in a whole direction. I love when people do that. Playing it safe. What does that mean? Because people, they do want to go big. They, they, they do want to have that brilliance. They do want to shine. But what does it mean to really do that the way you're describing it? Yeah, so what people tend to do, and I, I'm guilty of it as well, is you default to what you know, because it's safe. You know you're going to succeed there. But at a certain point, it doesn't work anymore. And so it becomes a barrier to your presentation brilliance. 
And people may feel like, well, I'm not brilliant. Yes, you are. We have all that we want and need inside. We have a body of work. We have experience. But what happens is we hold back because we're playing it safe in front of the room. And then it becomes my job to help reveal that brilliance that's inside of you. So playing it safe. For many speakers, they jumped on the Zoom, got into the TV world that we are all in now. And they played it safe because on the big stage, speakers like you and I have known, we play big, it's theatrical. You, you can shout and be very expressive. And they got here and they shrunk, didn't they? Mm -hmm. It's amazing how they took one stage, stepped on this stage, and they changed so much. So how can we have them break out of that and go back to being? They can't right, be open, so but what can they do? Okay, so I work in two, on two levels always, mindset and skill set. The first thing is to set your intention to have a positive frame of mind because that's the beginning of confidence. The second thing is to know the skill set. So now if you're on a screen, we're talking about media training. Now, <clears throat> I've done that before, but in person when people were talking to newscasters. Right. Now we are in the broadcasting business. You know what, Rich? Before Zoom ever launched, I was saying to people, the speaker of the future needs broadcasting skills. And here we are. And so what you need to do is show up in a way that's different. <clears throat> and that's the problem. A lot of people play it safe because this is what I know. I'm a keynoter, so I'm up here, <clears throat> but doesn't play when you're on a screen. So let me give you a couple of hints. Yeah. When you are on a screen, because I talk about stage presence and screen presence, eye contact is a major shift because as you know, in the room, you're looking at key people up here, back there, that doesn't work. So you need to think of yourself as having a satellite broadcast interview and you're talking just to the lens, just like I'm doing now. Now I can see you down here and when you talk, I'm looking, but I want an eye connection with the audience. So I'm looking here. So that's a big shift, but it makes a huge difference. I'll give you one other tip. When you're gesturing, you use a lot of space if you're in front of a room, but here you want your gestures close to the chest and you don't want them here because look what happens, how big my <laughs> hands are. I have Where'd to tell you, you quick, yeah, exactly. Quick story. Jamie Dimon of JP Morgan was on a broadcast interview and he was gesturing and it looked like he had these big mitts because they were right here near the camera. We've got to bring them in. Well, and again, those are some of the things that I coach the media training because it does feel like someone's going to punch you. And your reaction, even though it's through the camera, is I have to back up. Right. When in fact, you want them to relax and lean in with you and be a part of the conversation. Exactly. Um, yeah. One of the biggest things that I, I've, I've talked with people because hands are weird. People don't, don't know what to do with their hands. So confidence with your hands is a big thing. Like you said, they cover up their face. They flap them around too much intentionality of knowing how to bring them in, bring them out, when to use them. So they don't look like puppet hands, right? So right. the confidence of your hands is a big stumbling block for a lot of people. Do you, do you think we, we make it too hard? No, let me say this. This is uh, really empowering when it comes to confidence. You don't have to be confident to appear confident. So I want people to know that because it takes time to develop that inner confidence. It comes with experience. But if you know what confidence looks like, sounds like, and how to speak the language of confidence, you can wear the uniform of confidence and your heart can be beating, but they won't know it. So let me give you an example with hands. This is what I know from years of experience. Your power space is from your waist to your face. So get your hands above the waist as soon as possible. Because if they're down here, you look tentative. So now imagine you're nervous. You're really terrified. But you're standing in front of a group and you're like this. They think you're confident. You look confident. So what happens is they respond to you as if you're confident. You respond back to their response. And pretty soon you're in the moment and you're losing your self-consciousness. So I work with visual, vocal, and verbal, and verbal is the language. How do you show up with confidence? When you know those skills, you're able to navigate the audience a lot better. Just this past week, I was on a couple of calls and people's heads are still down at the bottom of the screen looking like this. Yeah. One of the confidence builders that I try to tell people is from torso up, I want to be in camera frames. I need to have to push back. 
get a higher chair. But the camera frame, again, we've never thought about this. Most people never ever think about camera frame, but the confidence of just sitting up higher and being in frame mm -hmm. has that illusion of your confidence automatically, doesn't it? Absolutely. And I will tell you, in 2020, uh, when we had the pandemic, one of my clients called me and said, true disclosure, Diane, we brought in a company, they taught us how to use Teams, but I don't like how my team is showing up. They're slouching, they're not. E so can you do something? So that's when I developed mastering virtual presentations. And one of the things they had to do is center themselves. And we took a screenshot. And I said, I want you to send that to me. And <laughs> you see how much space I have? There's not a lot. You, you don't want too little, but you don't want it so high that it overpowers you. You want to be in the middle. There are lots of things. You want a background that works for you. We were talking about that earlier. Yeah. So there are a lot of skills that go into virtual presentations. Well, and, and confidence when it comes to the backdrop, that's a great one to talk about because I'm used to being on stage. You're used to being on stage. You're used to be the color of the pop. There was an essence of being on stage. Then we all worked virtually and there was no stage. We were in a bedroom, our office, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. The transition is this is a stage. Yes. Treat it like a stage. So mm -hmm. the environment that you create, mine's a TV studio all the time. You have a beautiful, relaxed setting, but the environment helps give you con uh, confidence as well, doesn't it? Absolutely. And for people who have a lot of clutter, this is a room divider. So in a pinch, I can be camera ready. I do have other backgrounds like green screens that have my branding, but this background, I get a lot of compliments on. It's soothing with the cherry blossoms. And if I'm talking about speaking, which is anxiety producing, this has a nice calming effect. Yes, yes. And you want something that matches both your tone and the tone of what you want to communicate. This is nonverbal. It communicates without us saying a word. And that's powerful, really powerful, isn't it? Exactly. And one of my green screens that I made on Canva for free is I have a whitish background and I have my book, my virtual certification and my logo. And so it silently communicates my brand. So even if I don't speak at a meeting, people at least have an idea of what I do. Yes, exactly. So uh, what about that natural charismatic personality? We, we, we all have met people that just, they have that it, they ooze, they radiate something. And some people think I don't have that, so I can't do this. Can you dispel that myth a little bit that they can do it? Yes, because there are people who are born with charisma and you know, no matter where they go, they have this buzz. You don't have to be that. What I believe charisma is, or when it happens, is when you're passionate. It's about passion and energy. So think about what excites you. I was asked to work with a banker years ago because he was dry and boring. And yet they'd say, yeah, but I see him at work. After after work, we go to the bar. He's a good time, Charlie. He's joking. Da, da. We want that, Charlie. You know, And so it's bringing that real personality to your work. But here's where people start playing it safe in front of the room. They divert to what is expected. Be low key, be professional. Now let your personality come through. And that's where the charisma happens. When you're not thinking about you and you're focusing on the audience and connecting, that's when it happens. Well, that's why I love going back to the one-on-one -on -one private conversation. I've, I've been in radio all my life. It's mass media. But the first thing we were taught was you're having a one-on-one -on -one conversation through a microphone and those words of I, you, glad you're here with me. Thanks for listening. It's one-on-one -on -one verbiage, not mass media. And it becomes much more of a relaxed just conversation, doesn't it? Exactly. And I want to dispel the myth that you have to be really high energy to be effective or charismatic or attractive. No. If you look at other speakers, I don't know if you know of Brene Brown, who talks about shame. She's a researcher. Yeah. She's not high energy. She's you know, nice. She's good. She has really interesting information, but she's charismatic. She's got so much to say and she's passionate about it. So you can be low key and still have charisma. You can be low key and still be confident and make an impact. So please don't feel that you have to be something that you're not. Well, and anybody also, can be effective. Yes, yes. And the, uh, the other part of this confidence is know your material. Mm -hmm. Now, 
I've got people that memorize, memorize, which is great, but you don't have to memorize anything. You can use cue cards. You, you, you can use post-it notes. You can have other ways of memorizing things. You have a secondary screen, but knowing your material and not being caught off guard is a real big one because then you're ready for anything mm -hmm. and just keep going. You mentioned it earlier when you said one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Like if you have key, even key words on a post-it and you have a conversation, that does it. But I, I find that scripts and memorizing are death to many speakers. Unless you're a professional actor, most of us can't do it well. I well, once actually pulled a script out of someone's hands. <laughs> and years later, I, I think it was 2017, he, and that was like, I don't know, 2000. 2017, he's the president of the sports franchise. And he brought me in to work with his VPs. And he said, I'll never forget what you did for me. Because I knew he knew it. That was presentation brilliance. It's there. Take this away because the script is not working for you. However, there are people who go off message and really need to be reined in. Those people, I would say, need to be more scripted. But that's where the authentic people can feel your heart when you are connecting to the camera lens. When they know that you're sharing personal, you're, you're, you're really giving the best of what you have. Right. Whether it's scripted, unscripted or not, when they know you're being authentic, people love you through the camera lens, don't you? Yes, they do. In fact, you're reminding me, I have a friend who saw me on video and she said, you know, when you speak on video, I believe you. It's because I'm coming from a real place. I'm, I'm being sincere and I'm talking about what I know. I'm not memorizing something and I'm not talking about someone else's material. So just be you. Your brilliance will come through. And don't I give audience so much power we give them so much power they're not the enemy you know they want us to succeed and i always tell people you have something of value or you would not be speaking so share your knowledge share your brilliance so i want to sit on that for a second because stage fright whether it's on the physical stage the virtual stage the light goes on and we all just like oh they're all watching now and we all freak out versus they either paid to see you, they hired to see you, they came to see you. You already own them. Relax. They want you to succeed. It's completely opposite of what we feel when that light goes on. Can you give some help for our friends right now that struggle with that? Be they think I'm on now instead of yes, they already love you. Yeah. So first of all, it's 90% preparation and 10% delivery. So if you didn't prepare and you just walk in, I can't help you. I'm going to assume that you you practiced and you, you know your material. So what happens is when you give the audience that kind of power, you're really saying, I'm being judged. This is a performance as opposed to, I have information or a message I want to share. And I'm coming from an intention of positivity. I want to help you. I, I want to hear from you. And so the other thing is dialogue with the audience. It's not all about you. So get over yourself. You know, <laughs> when you're being very nervous, it's all about me, myself, and I. It's not. Yes. Stop being so self self-conscious. Ask yourself, how can I say this in a way that's clear? How can I make them comfortable? And you know, one way to start feeling feeling less nervous from the beginning is to ask a question. Get them talking. And people love to talk. They want to participate. They don't want a talking head. So those are some of the things I would recommend. Well, and nowadays through this virtual lens, through many of these, you can take questions in the chat. People can text you on a separate yeah. phone line. There's a lot of ways to bring engagement and it raises it to, instead of a monologue, we're literally in a dialogue together. And who doesn't want to be heard? Who doesn't want to have their first name called out? People love that. The more you learn yeah. that, the more confidence you'll become because you know the confidence is, or the crowd's having more fun with you. Absolutely. I mean, adult learners want to have control. They want to be involved. They don't want to be told what to do. So you're helping them whenever you engage them and you ask for their opinions. You don't, you can be the expert, but you can also be the facilitator. And I think those are the best presenters who do a combination of that. So I have expertise that I'm going to share with you. You're going to leave with some tips, but I want to hear from you as well, because some of the jewels are right in the audience. So include them, make them part of your presentation. 
back when we were both on stage, one of the things we had to learn was breaking the glass. There's an individual, an invisible barrier between you and the crowd. And the best speakers know how to break the glass. They either walk down on stage, they'll call somebody mm -hmm. out and bring them up. They'll crack a joke about someone in the audience they knows, and everyone starts looking around. You have to do the same thing here. You have to break this imaginary barrier and bring them into your living room or bring them into your studio, wherever you are. Breaking the glass is powerful. I agree. And you're reminding me of when I first started and I was a trainer, I used to think of this as my living room and these are my guests and I am hosting this and I want them to feel comfortable. So I get to the room an hour early and I greet people. And I try to get to know them a little bit. And my style is practical tips you can use immediately. So I call up volunteers. I mean, people are my palette in a sense. Yes. And I'll, I'll ask for volunteers and raise their hand. Come on, I'm going to show you this technique. And they love it. How has the shift to the digital world impacted you? Directly for well, Diane, how have they really impacted you? Well, the... One thing is I am now 95% virtual and loving it because I don't miss commuting and it's opened up a whole new world. I can work with people overseas. So it, it's expanded the market. It's interesting. Uh, it, it's using broadcasting skills. There are a lot of opportunities. I will say I do miss in person. So I like it when I do. Like last week I was on site in New York and that was a lot of fun because there's nothing like face to face. But digital is a challenge. And people think, well, it's a digital world, so I don't have to be so good. Yes, you do, because <laughs> there is your digital profile. Right. And so before I, I wasn't aware of this initially, but before anyone calls you. So we're both speakers. Uh, and let's say somebody's looking to hire you. Yeah. They've checked you out in every social media platform. They, they've seen your videos. They're not looking to see what you do. They have other questions. So does your LinkedIn profile show you in your best light? What about the videos that are out there? What about the wording? All of that is very important. So just because it's a digital world doesn't mean the skills of speaking are by the wayside. They're not. Is that one of the barriers to getting your brilliance here? Is that you're still fighting the digital age is here and it's a part of our life and you need to embrace it and you do need to be educated. You, you, you can't keep fighting this and win anymore. Can you? No, no. And so one of the questions I ask people, are you afraid to go out of your comfort zone? Why? And, and you know, another question is, are you policing yourself uh, and censoring what you're thinking or saying? And that's even more common with women who hold back yeah. and they don't say what they want to say. And one thing that the digital world brings you is a chat. So if you're nervous about speaking and hearing your voice, you can say something in the chat room, but it's so important to make your voice heard. And we have so many different media now to do that. You can create a video and then edit it. So you don't have to worry about, oh, I said the wrong thing, but you do need to show up. Earlier, you spoke about the environment. Is your environment supporting you? Do you have the right lighting and background or when you're going on site let's say it's a meeting and you work for a company get there early if you're one of the speakers and size up the room where are you going to sit where will you have the best leverage i know when i go and i'm hired to speak i get there an hour before sometimes i'll remove chairs i add chairs i try to set up the arrangement because how your environment is structured affects the impact on the people on your presentation 100%. And you need to put a pin on that, everybody. You need to write that down. You want to set it for your best optimizing. The room is your stage. The room is your playground. And the more you play with it to set it up for your success, you're going to win, win, win. And people don't know you set it up that way, right? They don't know right. you've intentionally placed chairs where you want them to play to what you're going to go do later on. Because there is theatrics. There, There is a performance to this. Right. You don't just accidentally show up and do it. You know, in my book, Knockout Presentations, chapter nine is devoted to staging and setting up your room is staging. And one of the things is what you said about intention. So if your intention is to have dialogue, you want a lot of discussion, 
a U shape is ideal for that because they're facing each other. Yes. Uh, if you want more formality, then maybe classroom style is best. So study the different patterns of room setup. And the other thing is, if you're off on offsite and you're going to speak someplace, learn the backdrop color. And I'll tell you two situations. One was I was doing a video demo and I asked the producer, uh, I'm going to wear a fuchsia suit, which is like a purplish pink. Will that televise well? He said, oh yeah, that's good for TV. Well, I asked the wrong question. What I should have said is, what is your backdrop color? Because I was standing in front of an orange curtain and you could see it bleeding on the screen. It looked terrible. Second example, I was speaking at a sales conference and I asked, what color is the backdrop? Oh, you know, I don't know. It's in Pennsylvania, whatever. So I brought two suits. One was black, one was like grayish silver. In the morning, I got there early. I had my black suit on. Do you know that the backdrop was black? I would have looked like a mime. So I went upstairs to my room and changed into my gray suit. So these are the things that are so important. You, maybe you call them show business, but they are critical. And people do not think about wardrobe. You never talk about that backstage before we came on. This whole wardrobe is confidence. Um, one of the things that I stumbled upon and to this day, I don't know how I stumbled upon this, but shoes never mattered to me. Shoes are shoes are shoes are shoes. Now, yes, I would put on a jacket, put on the right outfit, speak to the crowd. But one day I stumbled on the right shoes elevate my confidence. I don't know why, but it's something about putting on those ruby slippers, that thing from the Wizard of Oz. You put on <laughs> the right shoes and trigger comes alive at a whole new level. Does that happen mm. often? That part of the accessory, part of the... Confidence is something you put on? Absolutely. Backstage, I was complimenting you on the teal blue. By the yeah. way, that is a color that televises beautifully on screen. And there are certain jewel colors that are recommended. And yes, I mean, it really lights you up and it's great with your television background. But yes, I now am wearing, they're Michael Kors stretch boots, but they're kind of like a sneaker with bling. Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm wearing them is it's hard for me to commute in heels. And I get a lot of compliments. People will sign and give me an eval and say, love the shoes. So it's become a type of signature because I'm able to be comfortable on my feet for an hour or so. And comfort is what you want. Because you don't want that to be a distraction. <laughs> you don't want anything to distract you. Speaking to the live audience, speaking to the camera, you want to be right here. Nothing else matters. And that will lend to more confidence because you're going to know I'm in the sweet spot. Here's another tip. Rich. I always tell people don't wear a new outfit. By all means, buy something new, but don't wear it for the first time when you're presenting. Break it in so that you know how it fits and you're not moving and pull, pulling. And, and then you're going to feel confident. But get something that makes you look good. Color is part of that. Fit is part of that. Don't discount the importance of what you're wearing. Wow, I've never heard that in all my years. The idea of, because many of us, we, we, we go to certain events where we got to have a new outfit. We just have to, right? And we do premiere it at that event. The idea of getting it used, shaping it, get, that's a new concept, which I think is really powerful for a lot of people because it is like, I naturally fit in this. I naturally just ooze into it. It's not like it's something I have to figure out. Mm hmm why aren't we talking about that more? Come on. I've never heard that. Yeah. Wear it at least once. And it's not a big deal. I mean, you could certainly go and wear it for the first time, but I'm always thinking of comfort and confidence and you have something you've broken in, you know, it looks good. You know how it fits. Oh, okay. Now I'll wear it for my presentation. I work with a lot of people on the, the interview side, they are on talk shows, interviews or on podcasting, learning how to be, a great guess is huge. And that's where some of the confidence breaks down. People get nervous. They're going to surprise me with a question. I don't know. I'm not prepared for that. I'm going to forget the proper stat that I need to have. Perfect. Bring it way down, right? Relax during your interviews, right? <laughs> yeah. You, Again, you're putting too much pressure on yourself. It's not an inquisition. <laughs> so that's the thing. And one thing that you're very good at, Rich, is you're always talking about, I want to have a conversation. Most people can do conversation. So that's the approach when you 
are a guest, but you do have to prepare. You know, you don't just show up and shoot the breeze. You have message points. You you hear what they want to ha- talk about. You need to know who your audience is. And then relax and have a conversation. You know, when I work with people one-on-one, especially on a screen, I call it the Starbucks technique because people get to be very scripted and unnatural. So I'll say, okay, tell me again what you do. We're in Starbucks. We're having a cup of coffee. Tell me. And then people relax and they have a conversation. That's 100%. Uh, I, I intentionally have a mug every time. It, it does feel like we're just in the backyard. Cheers. How are you doing? Take a sip. It's casual. It's fun. And it breaks it all down. Now, the other part of confidence is you do need to have sound bites. You need the higher level your interviews go, the higher level your profile goes. You do need to have pre-scripted things. But here's the trick. The confidence is don't make it sound like it's pre-scripted. You make it sound like it accidentally rolled out of your mouth one day. Mm -hmm. That's the gold, correct? Absolutely. So one of the sound bites I use today is your power space is from your waist to your face. I say it all the time. So it comes out very naturally when you cued me on gestures. If you talked about something else, I might not have used that. So one thing that I work with with people is let's create a couple of sound bites. And what's a sound bite? It's a quotable quote. It's something that you can lift and someone can repeat it easily. It's memorable and it's it's a learning point. And that helps as well when you have a few of those at, in your toolbox. I help you shine on camera, shine on stage, elevate you and your brand authority. I say it in my sleep, I think, by the way, sometimes. It's just as part of what we do. But these are all great. Confi- and they do show your brilliance. Because when you have something like that, you people are going to go, wow, what an expert, what an authority. They really know and believe this. And they'll believe it too, won't they? Absolutely. Because you believe it. And because you're being who you really are, you're having a conversation. And, you know, no matter what it is, whether it's analog, digital world, whatever, people still want to know who you are as a person. They want to like you and then they want to trust you. And how do you do that? No, like trust through the way you communicate. Are you showing that you care about people? Are you sincere? Are you giving them value? Or are you a talking head who memorized some words and exiting what? the stage. <laughs> so how does it work? Because we're, I'm, I'm seeing a shift. A shift is for more authenticity. They just don't, they don't, yes. don't just want experts. They don't want talking heads. Like you said, they actually want to get to know you with authors. I work with, they always want to talk about their book, the villains, the heroes, the science, whatever they want to talk about the book. But people are now interested in, I read your book, but I want to know what made you tick author. Why did you write that book? What's, how do we stand in our brilliance in our authority without turning it into the biography of, <laughs> but there's a part that that brilliance of who you are is important for that. No, like, and trust, isn't it? It's all about storytelling. That's a really important skill. And people think storytelling is once upon a time or having this long 15 minute motivational. No, it's just telling your personal stories in short little snippets. And that's how people get to know you or even telling stories of a client that you worked with. But um, it's interesting. I work in the area of executive presence and I've looked at the research and it's changed from 2014 to say 2021. And where before, I forgot what, what it was, but it's now changed to authenticity. It's really valued. And I asked myself, why is that? And I think part of it is there was so much emphasis on diversity Mm-hmm. and inclusion. And I think that is part of the authenticity. Also, we're not as much of a hierarchical top-down organization anymore. And so we we have to accept all kinds of different people. And we tend to do p- business with people that we like, that who are like us, that we trust, that we know. And so that means getting to know people on a personal level. And sharing part of your personal is also sharing... I swung and I missed. I tried. It didn't work out. Oops. Let me tell you about how it didn't work out. We have to be vulnerable to tell the bad as well as the good. And I think that's where some people get scared of. I'm going to lose my brilliance by telling you something that I blew. When in fact, it's the other way around. Yeah. Let me tell you an example. And this is where I learned how not to play it safe in front of the room. Uh, I was talking to a women's group. It was a, a lunch meeting. It was a network group. I've been there before. 
uh, second or third time I was speaking. And all of a sudden, something came out of my mouth that I did not plan, that wasn't in my notes. I was talking about the struggle trying to transition from a speech pathologist in the New York City schools to making career change. And it was really a struggle. And I said, one night, I just sat up and said, God, I surrender. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do. Just get me out of here. Well, I was shocked after I finished, these women started rushing me, came right up to the room asking questions. And they'd say things like, well, if you were speaking in a corporation, would you have said God? And I said, well, yes, because I was quoting myself. But it, I realized that in that moment of being vulnerable and being in the moment, that was power. Diane, this has been fabulous. We do want to share with everyone, you have a marvelous website. You you are a coach, a trainer, an author. So what are they going to find? We hit the QR code and go to your website. Thank you. They can go to deresta.com and they can also go to my YouTube channel, which I don't know if you have it on there or not, youtube.com forward slash Diane Deresta. I have over 200 videos on there. And I also have a LinkedIn learning course called Speaking Confidently and Effectively. Just put my name in the link in the search bar and it will come up. It was rated in the top 20 most popular LinkedIn courses on in 2021 and 2022. So some good tips on that as well. That's perfect stuff. Hit that QR go, grab your phone, take a moment, check it out. Diane's always got great stuff and there's always more coming. Yes, she's not done. So you want to make sure you go there and go there often. So, Diane, we, we, we've talked about this idea of going big, taking risks. Land the plane for us. What would be a great way to break through that I'm holding back versus going for it big? What would be one of your best tips you can give us today? The first thing is awareness. Are you aware that you're doing that? Uh, intention. Is that what you really want? Do, do you want to get to the next level or do you want to go big? Because it's different levels for different people. And then once you've decided, yes, I want to, but I don't know how I'm holding back, then it's get the resources you need, whether it's joining an organization, whether it's friends who can support you, whether it's a coach or somebody else of that nature, but figure out what is it that I want? Why am I holding back? Who can help me get to where I want to go? Diane Arista, always great to see you and hear what you got going on. Thank you for the great tips here today. Thank you, Rich. Always a pleasure. Well, Diane Arista, again, make sure you go to the website, follow her on LinkedIn and other places. She's always creating wonderful, amazing things. And remember, we're back every Sunday night. Sunday night, we give you a premiere party. You do want to go to our YouTube channel, hit the bell. You'll get a warning five minutes before every one of our shows premiere. You want to come on in, join the chat. Some of our guests are there, many other viewers are there, and we learn more and deeper by sharing information together. And this is all made possible by our sponsors, Adavita Studios. Again, they are taking your voice, connecting your voice to the world, to the power of audiobooks, podcasts, much more. They will help you produce it and distribute it, audavita.com. And also, we're brought to you by Suspiciously Convenient Productions. If you have a, a book that wants to get turned into a movie, a TV series, if you have a creative idea they're the company to help you do it especially convenient productions learn more about them that's going to do it for this week of rock the stage show we're back here every sunday night 7 p.m eastern time with amazing authors speakers influencers guests are going to help you learn how to shine brighter on camera and stage why elevate you and your brand authority that's going to do it for this week on the trigger rich bond trigger we'll see you back here for rock the stage at 7 p.m eastern time